Hey everyone, just a heads up before we dive in. If you get stuck on anything with the circuit, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'm here to help you conquer these projects. So let's begin. The video explains a basic door controller circuit. The circuit operates in an open loop fashion. Initially, the door remains in a stationary, closed position. A push button initiates the opening sequence, and the door travels until reaching its limit switch. This triggers a reversal, causing the door to close until reaching the opposite limit switch, at which point the circuit de-energizes. Let's now understand how the circuit works. When the door is first closed, a switch, limit number 1, gets pressed. This switch prevents a circuit formed by transistors T1 and T2 from activating. The circuit remains inactive because the closed door keeps limit number 1 pressed, which in turn keeps transistor T3 turned on. With T3 conducting electricity, the voltage between resistors R3 and R5 cuts off power to the T1 and T2 circuit, preventing it from working. As a consequence, a relay, relay number 2, stays off, interrupting the power supply to the motor through another relay, DPDT relay number 1. This effectively cuts power to the motor, preventing it from running. Furthermore, when the DPDT relay is off, its contacts connect to the normally closed NC points. Since the motor is wired to these contacts, it's configured to move towards the opening direction when the relay activates. However, because relay number 2 remains off at the normally closed contacts in C, the motor's power supply stays cut off, keeping the entire circuit and motor deactivated. Additionally, since the limit switch at the other end, limit number 2, is not activated, transistor T4 is also switched off. Without the ability to conduct electricity, T4 remains shut off. So basically, although the entire door controller circuit is disabled, it's essentially in a standby mode ready to activate when conditions change. Pressing the push button momentarily forces transistors T1 and T2 to conduct electricity. However, they can't latch yet, because the closed door keeps limit number 1 pressed, which in turn keeps T3 conducting and the R3, R5 feedback disabled. Despite this, within a second of pressing the button, the temporary activation of T1 and T2 triggers relay number 2 to switch on moving its contacts to NO position. This energizes the motor, causing it to start moving. As the motor turns, it instantly releases pressure on limit number 1. With limit number 1 no longer pressed, T1 and T2 can finally latch, ensuring relay number 2 stays on even after the push button is released. The motor continues running until the door reaches its fully open position. At this point, the door mechanism itself presses limit number 2, triggering the next stage in the process. This process triggers transistor T4 to turn on through resistor R8. As a result, relay number 1 flips its contacts to the normally open, NO, position. This clever use of the relay reverses the motor's direction, causing the door to close. However, there's a potential issue. When limit switch number 2 releases quickly during closure, it could turn T4 off, leading to a sudden motor halt. To prevent this, a clever combination of resistor R8 and capacitor C2 acts like a delay timer. It keeps T4 conducting electricity even after the switch releases, ensuring the door closes smoothly. Once the door reaches its fully closed position, limit switch number 1 gets pressed again. This turns on transistor T3, which disrupts the latch circuit formed by T1 and T2. As a result, both transistors and relay number 2 turn off. The relay contacts shift back to the normally closed, in C, points, effectively cutting power to the motor. With the motor off, the door remains securely closed at its initial position. This entire process waits patiently until the push button is pressed again, initiating the cycle anew. After the door closes completely, there might be a short delay before it responds to the push button again. This is because a component, C2, needs a few seconds to discharge. Don't worry there's a helpful indicator to guide you. An LED light, LED1, will stay on while the system is finalizing the closing process. As long as LED1 is illuminated, the motor is not ready for immediate opening. Simply wait a few seconds for the light to turn off, and then the push button will function normally to open the door again. The values of resistor R8 and capacitor C2 determine how long it takes for the motor to stop after the door closes completely. This delay ensures the door shuts firmly before it can be reversed. This delay is also indicated by the LED light, 
LED one. That's it for the automatic door controller circuit. Feeling inspired to build it? Go for it. And if you get stuck or have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I'm here to help. For the complete parts list, please refer to the description below. Thanks for watching.